Uh, so we'll just jump in. I would love to hear, because you're, I mean, you just said you just got back. You're trying to switch from like dad to yes. work mode. And I don't hear men talk about that a lot. Really? No, no. Ooh. So, yeah, it takes so a second. So tell me about that, yeah. Well, even just my like, uh, the timing of my life where usually I wake up at six to little girls like pushing on me or, <laughs> yeah. you know, the little one is just like, she'll just start grabbing at your face to wake you up. Um, and then if that's your, if that's the case and you're with them until you drop them off at school at 830, by the time I get to um, my office, my studio, it's like, it's like midday. Yeah. 930 is yeah. super midday yeah, if you have two little, yep. <laughs> two little toddlers. Yep. Um, so then I'm like so tired by nine o'clock and I'm out. Yeah. And now on the, like I just, we're starting the tour here in Austin and, uh, the show doesn't start till 839. Then you're like oh, I know. psyched. I know. You know. I was like, cause I'm coming tonight. I'm bringing my boys. Amazing. And I'm like, oh God, eight o'clock. Okay, no, I know. It's a lot to this. ask. You got yeah. this. You can do and it. And then, um, then you're up and f pumped. Right. You want to hang out with your, your friends and the people. So then you don't go to bed till two or three. Right. So that, just that, the timing switch is right. different. Right. Um, and what? then also just this, the, I don't know, the, the thing of like, it's, it's really good. There's nothing wrong with it, but like the, the thing of being worthy of being on a stage in front of a lot of people, yeah. that's what I'm really doing a lot of work on right now, which is really kind of fun, interesting work. Yeah. That is one thing. And then going home and being just completely of service to these little humans. Right. And the way my five-year-old calls me, uh, she's like, you're just a big old dada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In like the sweetest, um, yeah. condescending yeah, way of all like, time. Get You're over just a big old data. I don't know what <laughs> the big deal is. Yeah. Um, I always felt like it was really a really beautiful switch for me to go from if I was speaking on stage and there were eight thousand women in the audience and they were you know pumped and hyped and we had this whole amazing weekend at a conference and I would go home and my kids do not give a mm -mm. crap. It's like, make me pancakes. Yeah. You know, I peed my pants. Like, do that. And there's something really beautiful about that immediate sort of pull back down. To it's earth. wonderful. Yeah. But I do think there's something interesting that you only know if you have to go on stage, which is, um, it's sort of, well, maybe not. You can't I, just I go out speak. as a big old dad. No, you have to switch persona. You, everybody coming tonight doesn't just want a big old dad. Yeah, data. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's real. It's so they want real. Other, they want something else. Yeah. Which is also a. It's not a, a manipulation. It's also a part of me. Right. I think that's what's, what I'm really going through right now in my life. I'm 38. Is just widening the versions of myself that yeah. there are. Which is challenging. It's way easier at 26. Yeah. Just be like, I am this. <laughs> this is my main purpose. All of the things in my life revolve around this. I work out for this. I think about this. I read books for this thing. And now there's 27 things that are in my my periphery that are all happening at the same time and i'm i would say i'm a much more balanced person but it's hard well and it's how do you hold space for both those things yeah um and i think that sort of that switch to flip on you do have to have a little bit of ego and i don't mean ego in terms of like egocentric sort of full of yourself but just the like here's the identity i am when i get on the stage but how how can i encompass both of these creatures yeah. and what is it to be a partner to your wife and what is it to be uh, all of these things a friend or a brother or it's yeah. a lot to hold you know it's it, i don't know if this relates or not i'm just riffing the idea of um so i like to go sing at hospitals it's mm -hmm. like one of my favorite things in the world it's been hard to do during covid yeah but to go sing for kids in hospitals and you realize that like you have to get good at it's not ego i don't know if this even makes sense but you can't it's not a completely um normal situation kind of what we're talking to turn something on because if, if I go into a hospital and I feel what exactly what's happening here um, I'll cry yeah you can't do it that's not good yeah and now it's a, now we're having a very like you and me experience but you I'm, I'm here to lift your spirits right and so this is not about me so I actually have to turn into something a little bit different yeah to where I'm not exactly feeling everything but I'm here to serve you and the best way that I can serve is like a little bit of distance yes which is very interesting do you yeah. feel like that with fans as well because I do um it, it's a very hard thing for me to explain to people and I feel like it sounds a little crazy but I can't when I'm if I'm doing a book signing or if I'm speaking or whatever I can't take all that I can't feel that because I feel like if I feel it all it's sort of exactly what you said I'm not going to be able to do what people need me to do when I'm on the stage. Sure. So I love like I love that connection, but it's it it almost overwhelms me if it's so the distance thing yeah, I yeah. get is like I'm 
I, I don't know. I don't want to cry similar. with them. You're I don't trying wanna, to like, yeah. yeah, you're riding this energy wave. Yeah. And you've got to get good at it. And how does that, just going in a totally different direction, how does that affect you physically? Like um, for me, the adrenal fatigue of doing that yeah. over and over, like the year when I was on stage constantly, not the same as a tour, obviously. No, I'm sure but it, is. Like, it is similar. It's... Did it get, get you down? Oh my gosh, <laughs> fried me. And I didn't know what was happening. And I finally like saw a doctor who was like, well, here's, here's what this looks like inside of your brain. And you're getting such a rush every single night. Yeah. You can't ever fulfill that in your everyday life. So you're sort of uh, chasing that high. So have you experienced anything Yeah, like totally. That? Yeah. I think um, you're catching me fresh off a COVID crash hard. Yeah. Because I basically just had been doing that for yeah. like 10 years. Yeah. What did it feel like to slow down? Terrifying. Oh, yeah. Terrifying. Um, I have a very, like, addictive personality. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think without even knowing it, I was very addicted to what you're speaking of. Mm -hmm. And so then when, when I couldn't be around people, couldn't be around crowds, you're, you're talking, like, consistently every night, thousands of people all singing yeah. the same thing together. Affirming you. <laughs> is like, oh, you know, and, and then parsing out, like, how much of that is just ego douchebaggery that you need and then how much is like this is your purpose this is yeah. important it's very confusing what i do know is that when you take it all away for two years i was really not cool yeah like not cool. a lot of people therapy yeah 12 step stuff like yeah. had to like go hard into rebuilding a version of my insides mm -hmm. that were a stronger foundation yeah because without that thing to be addicted to you had to reach for something else yeah and yeah. i was left with like ooh, i'm not as good inside myself as i thought i was mm -hmm. And so now a lot of, like you'll see tonight, the show is like a lot, a lot of the new songs are kind of about that. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now in the place of like, whoa, whoa the, the dichotomy of, of not needing it is interesting. Yeah. Like if you actually get to a place where you're not needing it, I think what people who are achievers are really afraid of is if I get my self-worth to a place where I don't need anything. Will I still be Will driven? I do anything? Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like, do I, I, yes. Will I just be cool and sit 100%. on rock and meditate forever? Yes. Yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah, I, I, I got to um, spend a day, paid a, a exorbitant amount of money to, mm -hmm. to uh, hang out with a like a performance coach last okay. year. I was sort of doing the same thing. What's my life? What am I doing? Yeah. What does all this mean? And I go spend a day with this person who was great. And there were things in the process that were really helpful for me. And then there was something I was really struggling with, sort of debilitating anxiety about a particular subject. Yeah. And I was like, what? Okay, so let's come up with a strategy. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm an Enneagram three. If you, do you know Enneagram? You count, me, count me a three. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I, you know, let's figure it. And he was like, hmm. So the thing is, if we fix that, are you still going to want to achieve the things you achieve? So he's like, my thing is, I'm a performance coach. So I'm here to get you to perform. So if we help you with this particular piece of what's going on, are you still going to be driven? Yeah. And at the time I was like, oh, great. And then I left and I've thought about that so many times since then. I'm like, this is the most fucked up advice I've ever heard because I get that I should want to achieve, but to struggle or to believe that you have to be sort of at the bottom of the barrel in order to have the umph to keep going. I don't believe it. Right. Me either. No. But I... You know, in the moment, I was like, well, he knows best. Like, he trains yeah. Olympians. Like, he's the guy that you talk to. And ever since then, I'm like, no, I just have to believe that there's a place for me to find achievement or pursue from love, mm -hmm. from wholeness, from, um, uh, from creativity, from joy, because that's not how you know, I started. I was just listening to something because I would consider myself a three yes, as well. Yes, yes. Three, and four? I think for us... Do you know your wing? I think I'm three, two. You're three, two. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so the... I was like... I'm, I'm about to give a talk to the Mental Health of America conference uh, in a couple of weeks. And I'm like really researching a lot of what we're talking about. And so one thing I came across was <clears throat> the idea of kind of like self-love and self-acceptance and seeing it for threes, whatever. Here we go. We're like fully going. <laughs> I love it. Status. For people favorite. that really want to achieve, um, it feels like giving up. Yeah. But the truth is that you're not good at it. Right. 
So you actually are, rather than taking a step back, you're taking a step forward in a different yeah. direction. And that helped me right. as like someone who's like, I need to win, I need to achieve. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm getting better yeah. at self-acceptance. Yeah. That is actually moving forward. Right. It's not just dropping my hands and going like, I give up needing, needing validation in yeah. every single moment. I, ha I heard this quote, or I read this quote a few weeks ago that I have said 10,000 times since then, which is, it's better to fail at being the future version of yourself Ooh. than succeed at being the current one. Yes. Because I have this vision in my life of the woman I want to be, the mama I want to be, the human being I want to be. And I just keep thinking, you know, on those days where I'm trying to come from love and then I end up being hard on myself or beating myself up because I didn't do it right or I didn't do enough. Yeah. And I'm like, Ugh. and I'm like, no, but remember, we're trying to be a new version and it's better to fail at being her than it is to keep being this and just kind of accept that as done. I love that. Yeah. So tell me why you're speaking to the mental health. You know, because I think that I'm someone who saw myself as an outsider in that community mm. completely. Like, yeah. I wouldn't have, if you told me two years ago, like, you, you're going to be speaking at the mental health conference, I'd be like, hell no. I'm good. Yeah. Like, not in a way that I'm, I'm pretty self-aware. Like, I wouldn't I say it like have that. A song. I, I wouldn't say it like song. that. It would be a lot more insidious. It'd be like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. That's yeah. like my thing. But you guys are cool. Yeah. And then um, really getting rocked hard all the way down to my core during the pandemic and having to do all this self-work is like, no, nah, I got I need therapy yeah, bad. We and all I need do. help yeah. to work on something as, as like myself as myself. Yeah. So I need, I need a lot of help in that way. And I really am someone who doesn't ever want to ask for help in any situation ever. I like to be the self-made man mm -hmm. myth thing. Yeah. And so it just started to make sense. And a lot of the songs that I'm writing have, have to do with that. And so I'm excited to dive into some of the speaking stuff. It's really interesting. Yeah. Um, how does the, how does the struggle manifest for you? Like for me, it was always anxiety. How does it show up for you? It shows up for me in spiraling out in addictions. Mm. And then you're like, okay, clearly that's, something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what are you, yeah. you good dude? Yeah. Like the conversation with yourself, like, <laughs> I don't think you're good because you're pounding Twizzlers at like 2 PM on a Tuesday. So this isn't normally how right. we're operating. Right. Um, and so there was a point at which, you know, I eventually just had to ask my manager for help for a therapist and yeah. some other things. And, um, and that process has been wonderful. Yeah. Is it hard to talk about to just sort of say like, hey, I needed help. I needed or would it have been hard in the past? I don't know. I think it's more just me to myself. Mm. I, and for sure, I'm terrified of I really like the perception that I've created of myself, yeah. <laughs> uh, that I'm, that I have it together or that I, you know, I think that my music is, um, uplifting and inspirational. And so I would have expected that during a pandemic when life got really hard, yeah. that I'd be someone that you would come to. Right. That's, that's what I put on myself, on right. my shoulders. And I was like, the, not, not the right. one you want. You right were now. the one that was going to have the answers for a global I got, pandemic. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Hey, that's guys. literally where I am in my head. I got Don't worry about it, guys. Yeah. Andy's got yeah. it. <laughs> and instead, I'm like, oh, whoa, I have, I am not equipped for long periods of silence yeah. and being alone. I'm bad at this. Yeah. I'm terrible at this. I think we all discovered yeah. we were going so fast. Mm -hmm. And when we slowed down and when the noise was taken away, what does that mean? Yeah. And who are we? And we and all hopefully ask Did you ever have, because I did, little moments of clarity when you're running the other crazy race? Oh, yeah. Before the pandemic, where you're like, this mm. might not be exactly 100%. who I am at my best. Yeah. Anyways. Right. But there's an interview that I got to be at in 10 minutes. Immediately, yeah, yeah. you would have something else that you had to do. Yeah. And as much as that um, was a, my whole world crumbled like I got a divorce in 2012 mm. all of it I was sort of that statistic but I am so fucking grateful yeah. I am so grateful it was so hard it's still hard but <laughs> I'm so grateful for the sort of stripping away of what shouldn't have been there and the slowing down so I keep having life is starting to speed back up for all of us right we're going back out on the road like the new books do the all of these things and I just keep this mantra to myself of like keep stay slow i don't stay i'm slow. not as worried i don't i think that it rocked us hard enough i was just having a really good conversation with my uh, creative director who's 23 he's on the road with me <laughs> and what an interesting thing we like everybody got at different points so i got the hard pause at 38 yeah which is interesting yeah he's 23 there's a right. whole generation of like right. young people that just got the super pause before they even started running the race right like what i feel like in our, i don't know the 
the thing of achieve, achieve, achieve made total sense to me when I was 21 coming into it. And I just ran the race. Yeah. And oh my God, trying to be of service to everybody else. I love what I do. There's so much purpose. But at 38 now with this pandemic, we all collectively are like, we should take a look at exactly how we're doing this. Is this the version of success that we want? Yeah. And so, you know, I, I felt bad for any of the teenagers that didn't get to go to their prom or, you know, just like different generations. But also there's like, whoa, but you also, there's going to be something you understand about life yeah. that I didn't understand. Yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. You there know? was a beauty in that process. There was a beauty in that pause. You know, those for as it, I, it was so hard. It Awful. was so It was horrible. the worst. Yeah. But there was in, I just keep coming back to this like slowness, at, at least as a mom, from someone who had been on the road, like literally on the road every single week for 18 months. Yeah. And just sort of feeling like my life was running me, not me running my life. And not being the mom, and not being present, not seeing my kids, missing all the school functions, like all, and then all of a sudden it was just gone. And what I loved about that process too was that all of the stuff we were chasing didn't matter anymore. Yeah. Like I remember, um, you live in LA, I lived in LA for 20 years. Um, all my agents, everyone based in LA lost their minds. Oh yeah. Because all of the significance they had with the watch, with, with the car, with the nice suits, they couldn't go anywhere, they couldn't do anything, they couldn't show off their lifestyle mm. to anybody and then suddenly they had no, there was like, who am I and what, what am, am I, I doing? I? Yeah. Um, I, you said the thing about um, writing uplifting songs and I was stalking your Instagram before. That's the most I prepare for an interview. It was just great. like, what's going on? Okay, he has kids, great. Fantastic. Um, and you, I saw you on a podcast interview and you said something I fucking loved, mm. which was um, you were talking about, the, the guy was sort of, I can't even remember, but the guy was like saying something to you about like, oh, you write all these like, he was talking about the kind of music you write. And mm -hmm. you were like, yeah, but if you live through what I've lived through, this isn't just a song. This is, a, it was sort of like, this is an act of defiance. Yeah. And I got that to my core mm. because I get so much shit for being positive. People are like, it's fake. She's not, I'm like, no, no. This is something that took a lifetime to get to coming out of a really, really dark beginning. Yeah. So if I can be positive, if I can be joyful, if I can like walk down the street and like feel sunshine and rainbows, even though I've been through what I've been through, I feel like it's more powerful. And I yeah. love that you said that about your music because you're like, I didn't just write these songs. Yeah. I've lived through this pain. Yeah. I've lived through this addiction. I've lived through this stuff. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, you're you're making art in a time that is really hard. Yeah. It's really hard right now. Especially in the last little bit here. Mm -hmm. So it were it there's a lot of cynicism and difficulty and darkness. And so therefore I think most of my stuff is grounded in pain, kind of what you're talking about. So if I if I sing just keep your head up because yeah. then sure. I sang that because my mom just died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah, that grounds it in a way that's like, you want to hear it? Yeah. I'm not bullshitting you. Right. I'm brutally going right. through some shit right yeah. now and I'm trying to stay up. Yeah. And that is something that I think that if, you know, if you're in the, the business of, I don't know, uplifting hope, even those words don't, or, or yeah. they carry Sounds, so much. It's kind of yeah. like the word God. Right. It's like, uh oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can't go. even get to any of the beauty of right. that because right. it's so, there's so much sense in run it. Um, that I think, and, and, and when you're doing that with speaking or with music, I love the connection that you have with fans. Some people some just don't understand. Yeah. Like, oh, you're going to hear music tonight. You're like, sure. But this per the, the type of music that I make and the connection that, you know, you make with your fans, like, people are coming to sing tonight, but the DMs that I woke up to this morning were like, so excited to come, had leukemia, you listen to your song religiously. Like, oh, that's yeah. what we're doing tonight. Yeah. We're like pushing you through the hard points right. of your life. You know, the music that I make, I heard this quote one time, like music is like a spiritual chiropractor. And if you do it right, yeah. people come in and they leave and they're like, ah. Yeah, music sick. is medicine. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and I think at some point, everybody has a burden to bear with how they will be perceived. And if it's your purpose, then you just go like, yeah, All right. that's okay. This yeah. is what it is. You yeah. know, I don't know what to tell you. I'm, yeah. I know that um, 
that I will be perceived a certain way. Can I do a poem for you? Of course. You can okay. do literally anything. Okay, so this is the poem that I usually start concerts. I have a different one that I'll start my poem, uh, a different poem that I'll start with tonight. But this is the one that I've been starting for a while. It's just called Naive, and it goes, It is no longer impressive to me to watch these melancholy documentaries exposing that behind the things we buy, we love, or eat is a bunch of shitty people run by money, sex, and greed. I'm not impressed with the focus. Under what they say, it might be true. We ignore the beauty of the forest, obsessing on low-hanging fruit. What about my soul? What about this life? What about the infinite space in the sky? What about the galaxies of possibilities swimming in my daughter's eyes? I've been labeled positive, optimistic, the guy that makes the happy music. And while I'm flattered with these words, come with an aftertaste of stupid. As if smart people are the ones that used to smile but learned their lesson. As if the scientific truth of reality is that it's depressing. I do not agree. So if it's stupid to see the good in everything, then hell yeah, call me naive. <laughs> right? That's amazing. That's just like my... Just like, that's yeah. my zone. And it's really hard to continually be uplifting in a world that is difficult. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And therefore, when it becomes rebellion, then people go like, oh, okay. He's not just like lying to me. Right. I think that's underneath what it is. Right. Is when you, is if someone doesn't know you and they yeah. see a Rachel Hollis post yeah. and you're like, she's so happy. The world is fucked. Why are you so happy? Right. Don't lie to me. Yeah. And I'm, I'm with you. I don't want to lie to you. Yeah. I'm coming at you from a place of like, the world is fucked. Right. There's, it's still Thursday. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, what are we going to do about that? Yeah. Are we going to just like agree to like give up or do we... Figure it out. Yeah. How do, how do we show up with light? There's still so much beauty in this world. There's still so much love. If you are looking in the right places and if you are trying your best to uh, work on yourself, work on the things around you, here's some music if you want. Yeah. You know? Well, what's cool too, I feel like um, there is this, uh, there's science behind what happens when a group of people sing together, like our heartbeats. Oh, so good. Syncopate, like at all. Yes. And I feel like it's a bit like coming to a church service. Like mm -hmm. I fully expect I'm coming to a church service tonight. <laughs> I do, cause I, it's like, I know it's so cute. Like all of my boys, even the nine year old, I was like, hey, do you want to go? He's never been to a concert. So this is his first concert. I know it's Very big exciting. deal. Okay. And he's like, who is it? And I said, it's Andy Grammer. And he's like, who's that? Yep. And I said, just go on Spotify. And then he like started texting me lyrics. Cause he, of course we know all the songs, yeah. right? So yeah. I'm like, oh, this is going to be so special. <laughs> You'll see us all crying somewhere out there so in the fun. audience. Is this, um, this, you said this is a start because you did like a part one. So we did a part one okay. and we did a couple little different alterations to it, but it's basically, it's very similar. The Art of Joy Tour. How many cities is it total for you? This one, I think it was like 25 on the last, same thing about 25. On okay. The yeah. And how does that feel? Is that a lot? Is that? It's a lot. It's yeah. so fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I literally, for, I don't know about you, I forget all the way up to the moment that I walk on stage, you know? Yeah. And then I get on stage, and I'm like, oh my God, this is all. Well, you know, now that my life just has so many things that I'm worried about, yeah. kids, other business stuff, like I prepare and stuff, but I don't actually, it doesn't actually register that I'm an astronaut that gets to go to the moon. Like until right before I go on, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> How have I found myself in this situation? Right. This is incredible. There's a crowd that's screaming out there. We're going to go sing a lot of songs. All my toys are set up. All my friends are here. This is the dream. Yeah. yeah. The reason that I'm excited about Toys and Friends is because I started as a street performer and so much of my initial take on music was like just me and my guitar just trying to get someone to stop. Yeah. Where at? Like in New four York? Four years at Santa Monica Promenade. In Santa Monica? Oof. You're over on 3rd Street. You know, the beginning of your career in any form of art, anything really, I imagine, is like you're just trying to get good enough to be of service to other people. Right. And you're playing in these bars and there's the, the TV's on or you're just out on the street just being completely ignored. And then if you finally graduate to some club thing, then you play and if you happen to create magic, this is my favorite part, if you happen to create something magical in an unfair situation, then it's over and you have to like pack up all your stuff while the crowd just watches all the magic just like drip off of you. <laughs> Like it happens slowly. You're like, like, don't mind well, me. Well, this guy really just did something. We all had a moment together. And he's like wrapping his cables and stuff. This is brutal. Yeah. So While to have everybody vodka. here is like, oh, yeah, it's so great. So sick. I was going to say, is it different in every city? Does each city have its own vibe? Yeah. And it's feeling? different each time, too. Yeah. Like you, you create, you develop a relationship with a city. What are your favorite cities? Are you allowed to say, or is that like. No, no, no. I mean, 
I also think that there it's never for sure. Yeah. Like like we're gonna have a great show tonight. Maybe this is we're growing in Austin. Maybe yeah. we're gonna keep growing in different places. Right. I mean, the East Coast is where I grew up. There's a lot of good stuff there. Uh, I have a great relationship with like people come out in Florida, Ohio. I, it's unbelievable. Yeah. You put. It's also cool that like certain records do really well in different parts of the country. Oh, that's interesting. Which is weird. Yeah, that is like interesting. Like a song will blow up in a certain part of the country and then uh, everybody comes. And yeah. That, you know. Like, I feel pretty lucky that like I've had a bunch of radio success and then not and then have and then not. Yeah. And so to be able to still just have a pretty solid career is yeah. a real gift. What is it? What was it like to make this new album? Like you were making it inside of COVID and being Yeah, we made it in what? COVID. Okay. We did a lot of the songs. We did a two week writing camp. Um, okay, so what does that friends. entail for you? What's oh, our two week so writing camp? Because it sounds super fun. So I have a couple people that I know that I'll write a good song with. Okay. You never know if you're going to get a hit, but you just know, like, if you put all of us together, something good will come out. Yeah. And that is this guy, Jake Torrey, who I wrote um, Don't Give Up on Me and this new song, Lease on Life, with, and my most recent single, um, Save My Life. And, uh, and then this guy, Nolan Sipe, who I've written back. We wrote uh, Honey, I'm Good. So I got these two guys together and then a producer, John Levine, and we all got into a house for two weeks and just had a blast and played Mario Kart and wrote songs. Yeah. I cooked them breakfast every morning. And nice. Was, What's your breakfast that you Oh, just eat? eggs. Just eggs. You're like, that's all I got. Let's not get crazy. What, what kind of eggs? I can do a good scrambled egg. I do like a sweet potato hash and... Uh, and that's it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yep. That feels and I'm trying to up my like pancake game for okay. my daughters. Yeah, yeah. it is. A, I'll, I'll be honest. I did have to learn that one because I never really understood the proper yeah. way to make pancakes. And my five-year-old wants them every morning. Every morning. So I was like, okay, I'm destroying they're, Now, this. at this point, they're five and two okay. and they're like really sweet reviewers. They're like, what do you want? They're like, right. I want... Um, I want an elephant and yeah. I'll make something that looks nothing like yeah. an elephant. They're like, oh yeah. my God, That's it's amazing. An elephant. Yeah. Like, Good job, Dad. Way Good to go. Job. Yeah. When you guys are writing music, are you on guitar? Are you on piano? What do you do? Uh, both. Yeah. And are you the lyric guy, the music guy? You do it all. I am the lyric guy and the melody guy. It's kind of like if you were, um, once you get your point of view down, then you really want to collaborate. That's me. So meaning your point of view on a particular Before song? Before you have your point of view of what you want to say, and there's no way you necessarily get it without writing a bunch of songs, but it's terrifying to co-write before you have your point of view because someone else is going to, who is better at than you at writing songs, is going to be like, this is a good line. And then you have to worry about like, is the good, it, is the good line me <laughs> or just a good line? Where's the dynamic of that? Right. So that's really interesting and scary at the beginning. Once you know like, oh, this is what I'm about. This is what I sing about. This is my point of view. Then you're like, get me the best. Architects. Right. I want to go make right. the best houses. Yeah. With my vibe, you know. And so now I'm very much like I love to co-write because I'm never worried that we're not going to say something. You know, there's this incredible writer. My brain. Uh, what's her name? I will figure it out. Uh, we'll edit it. Put it in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> um, we wrote a song together about my mom passing, and she pulled it out of me. Mm. And then we wrote this song that no one else could sing yeah. except me. Yeah. That's and it was it. way better than I could have done by myself. And I was like, I'm in. Yeah. Co-writing is the coolest if you do it in the right way. Because um, in the beginning, I'm like, no, just me. I want to just do it myself. Yeah. Yeah. I always feel like co-writes end up being better songs. Sometimes, Unless you're yeah. like, I don't know, Billy Joel. Oh, my God. He got it. Song. But yeah. <laughs> other exactly. people, I do feel like it elevates <laughs> the experience. Even that, like, did you happen to watch that? I think it's on Apple TV, the um, Bruce Springsteen. It's like the making of his last album. Yes. And it's the E Street Band, and they're all collaborating together. So he'll be like, I was thinking this, and he'll say, and you're, you're literally watching geniuses yeah. who've worked together for 40 years, so and they're cool. just, and they're recording, they record all, uh, I'm not, I don't know the music, technical, whatever. They're not recording individually. The they do whole, it live at the same yes. time. Yes. Yeah, and it's awesome. like, if there's a mistake, that's what it is, that's and that's what's in the album. It's uh, so sick, it's really and it's cool. so inspiring. Yeah. But I love watching, um, just sort of understanding how anyone's doing what they're doing. Which yeah. Is why I'm like, ooh, what For do you me, think? it's mostly lyric. Like, I don't know, when you hear music, you hear lyric or music first. Lyrics only. Lyrics. Yeah. I feel yeah. like well, there's not that many of us. Well, I, I saw... Which oh, makes me nervous. Oh, I'm was, making music for, like, be, like this is what... I, right. Most of my fans, I think, are lyric first. But yes. the average amount of people that I ask, like, yeah. you hear 
music or lyric? Or right. Everybody says music. Maybe. Well, so I just was watching a special. I'm a huge, you're about to discover I'm a big music nerd, so right. I'm going to geek out with you right, right now. Um, but I was watching something on Trent Reznor the other day, and it was, um, they were interviewing him, and then they were interviewing producers he had worked with, and they said Trent is one of very few people that when he brings us a song or something he's working on, he literally sits lyrics down in front of you because he wants you to know the words, not just hear the music. Totally. And I was like, yes, I love that. But I have asked a lot of artists and they'll say, like, what do you hear first when you're writing a song? Most of them will say melody. melody. Or of course, they'll hear the song before they hear the You know, the it's words. funny, I'm not like a, what well, you're not gonna see tonight, let me tell you what you're not gonna see. Yeah. You are not gonna see me soloing on a piano yeah. or a guitar yeah. or a trumpet. You're, like, like, you're not gonna see me like Do you play trumpet? A little bit. Oh, wow, You're not okay. gonna see me virtuosoing, uh, yeah. like, yeah, you're not gonna see that. So for me, soloing is poetry. Yeah. Is like spoken word. Yeah. And so I like to start. Yeah, like, that was sick. Here we I go. did not know you I'm do going, that. I'm going off on words because this is my favorite right. thing. Right. Yeah. Right. And I feel like that's what's lasting. I, and obviously I'm a writer, so that's what I'm paying of attention course. to. Yeah. But when I hear, like I have just sort of have this collection of these are my favorite lyrics in a song of all time. Like you hear something, you're like, how yeah. did you do, like Billy Joel, I was just, the other day I was listening to this song and I was. Um, Which one? Um, <clears throat> oh, Rach. You know my well, relationship just, with Billy Joel or no? No. Okay, go on. You finish oh, wait. and I'll tell you. You yeah. hate him? He's no, your best I friend? Him. Okay. Yeah. Um, you were. Uh, you never counted on me when you were counting on your rosary. Mm, what? So good. What? That is so, such... So good. Like, just catching those lines, or I... Jack's so tired of hearing me tell people this, but Mark Cohen, Walking in Memphis. Um, Beautiful. She said, tell me, are you a Christian child? And I said, ma'am, I am tonight. What? Oh, oh, I love just a so single good. one line. Something that'll that like really yeah. get you good. But what are you, tell me oh, about Oh, so my mom passed away and before she passed, she, said, she asked me for what the sign would be of like to let her know that she's like with me and it's anytime I hear Billy Joel. It's really sweet. How crazy. Really, really cool. Yeah, how crazy. So wow. on this tour, which I tell on stage too, is that uh, we get to, it's called the Art of Joy Tour. We get to Boston. It's like a sold out show. It's awesome. Walk into catering, and the lady who's serving us, her name is Joy. Right, you know I did. Story? See, I saw you tell and the story. And then she's wearing tell, yeah. a Billy Joel T-shirt. Yeah. And I'm just like, what up, mom? Yeah. Oh my god, that's awesome. I I say how crazy one because of all the people I could have brought up with you today. That yeah. was it, and I didn't really think of the connection there. But um, my older brother passed away. He was an incredible musician. Really. And his favorite was Eric Clapton. Mm. And so um, at my grandpa's funeral, my big brother performed "Tears in Heaven." Oh. And. Every time I hear that song, I know it's him. And I, you would not believe the places that that song has come up. I'm talking in Italy, sitting at a piazza having wine, mm. and a guy is performing guitar completely in Italian, and then all of a sudden we'll just start playing Tears in Heaven. I've heard it in other countries, other places. It'll come on in the most uh, peculiar moments, and I'm always like. Uh, how old was your brother? He was 17. Oh, yeah. Wow. Jeez. Yeah, he uh, committed suicide, which is why yeah. I asked the question about mental health because that's a big it's one. Very for real. Me too. Yeah, it's absolutely. Real. Yeah. Um, but oh, I didn't know that story. That, I love. Like, I've had an, like many wild interactions with my mom, who's passed away. So I'm I just like, super love getting into. Yeah. The, that relationship to me is really fascinating. Yeah. Because I I do think I'm not. I don't know. I I was open to it, but not like gung ho. It's crazy. Yeah. But then if you have too many experiences, Absolutely. you just go like, I don't know. Yeah. My mom, I have a super momager in heaven. Yeah. And she pulls strings for me. And yeah. I love it. It's amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. How long has she been gone? 13 years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you, I have seen you tell stories about her best friend. Yes. That's what oh my God. Yes. The about. new song yeah. is about her best yeah. friend. Yeah. We tell that She's story? the best. Yeah. Uh, her name is Lee. She was, she is slash was my mom's best friend when mom was here. And um, when my mom passed away, she just started quietly doing all the things that a mother would do, you know. So freaking sweet. So, and, and in the time, it wasn't like she was just like, it wasn't like she showed up and was like, I'm the new thing. She just like was of service and, oh, there's no one to walk you down the aisle? I got that. Mm. There's not going to be anybody at your baby's birth? Like, I'm here. And so to get to write her a song called You Saved My Life, it's called Save My Life. Um, and then have all the promo be just like about her. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. She's getting recognized in different parts of the country. Yeah. <laughs> We're like coming up to her like, you're Lee. You're the godmother of the year. You're like the one. And it's been like, she's been having a really, she had a really hard year and it seemed like it just 
was ne- I didn't mean to do this, but it seemed like it was really, really helpful. Yeah. So then she tells me, like, I know that you wrote the song and it's your voice, but it's, it still just kind of feels like your mom saying thanks, you know? Yeah. Brutal. I was, uh, this morning I was having coffee with my boyfriend and I was telling him uh, that story because I had seen a video of you when I was stalking your Instagram yeah. of um, you, she was in the audience yeah. and you had to turn around because yeah. you couldn't look at her and tell the story at the same time. And totally. he was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I know, it was beautiful. That's so incredible though that you get to um, sort of not pay it forward the wrong term, but that there's, you get to sort of use this instrument to bless her in that way. Yeah. And then hopefully create this, these little, like what's sweet is you get to create something that other people share. So on see what I'm getting DMs or on, on Instagram or TikTok, I'm seeing people share it and tag people like you did this for me, or they're sharing the song. You saved my life to someone who was adopted is the person that adopted them or yeah. it gets to be like this little device to tell someone something that can be hard to tell. Yeah. Sweet. How long has, like, how did you get, because I actually don't know this story. How did you get from Third Street Promenade yeah. to, to here? Yeah. Um, a big part of that is my manager, Ben Singer. He's amazing. And he, uh, he met me on the promenade. And we st- we've been no working together way. the whole time. Yeah, was like he a years. music manager already? Yes, he had yeah. another client uh, who was He wasn't incredible. the guy at, like Hot Dog on a Stick who was like, I could make something of you. No, but he hadn't <laughs> had like a big radio success yet. Yeah. Um, and so we really, he's been my manager this whole time and he's great. And yeah, I, I was just like, he helped kind of, um, you need, especially in any sort of art, I don't know if you have someone that helps you like with your talks or with your stuff. I, for me, it was, it was really helpful to have someone who helps uh, edit Mm, you know yeah so you have like, like a lot that. of great creative energy you make a bunch of stuff and then you have someone who helps edit like that's the best part yeah or that song is better than this song or so they have someone to go back and forth with and he heard uh keep your head up and was like that's, that's really it. yeah yes, and so you i had, had already, another you song had that, that i thought song. was better than that mm. um and it is isn't who the hell knows for sure keep your head up is the one that everyone else likes <laughs> <laughs> you're like <laughs> the no most. no there was something to yeah, that yeah. yeah um so that one from Street performing to that song being heard by different like radio people. Then we got signed from that song and we kind of like went out and just have been on the road and making good music and trying to serve the fan base now for like a decade. Yeah. Good Lord. How does that feel? 10 years. It's pretty weird. Yeah. And awesome. Yeah. You know, do you feel like, is there sort of, do you want to keep evolving? Do you want to take it? Like, is there, I, I heard something recently. It's a Seth Godin quote. Where he says, I know, right? Where he says, um, We're just so the thieves, opposite, I know. <laughs> what else can just we like... read that will make <laughs> us stronger and more successful? Just a couple of uh, things. <laughs> um, he says, the opposite of quitting is not staying stuck. It's a recommitment with greater mm. passion. So most people either just stay here or quit. Yes. Thinking that one is the opposite Ooh, of the other, I but love it's that. not. The opposite of quitting is recommitting yes. with passion to what it is you're doing. So what is it? I know you're in the midst of a tour, but like. Yeah, I think I'm really having fun doing that right yeah, now. Yeah. I think that COVID smacked me in the face hard, like many people, and goes like, okay, cool. What? Not stop. This is awesome. Yeah. And we have a lot of skills in, in this area. We're going to throw a hell of a show, and it's awesome. Yeah. And I want to keep doing that and growing that. But like, it, what, that's where I think the speaking stuff came from. Yeah was uh, just a desire to branch out. Yeah. You know, I think there's probably some sort of a book at some point. Absolutely. Um, yeah, figuring it out. I don't yeah. totally know. Yeah, which is beautiful. What's interesting is I think that if you'd asked me two years ago, it would have been more based on like how to grow my business. Mm-hmm. And what is the, the business meaning music or the business meaning you have other projects that you work yeah, on? Yeah, like just more a- around like achieving. Yeah. As opposed to now what wants to grow is like, I don't know, something a little more like, like, I don't know if the speaking, like, I don't know, there's, there's different motivations. Yes. No, I, I get that's it. That's what I'm saying. I get it. What came out of this for me is I started, um, it's why I've been interviewing so many musicians lately. Um, I started songwriting. Great. Because. Yo, the hook was good. Did you write that song? What? Which one? The one that I just saw on your Instagram. Oh, yeah. Wait, what was the, what was the uh, end line? Yeah. Um, May the bridges that you burn light your That's way. That's a good line. Thank you. Did you write that? No. The girl that I was writing with was, was wearing it on her hat. I was and like. And we were like, wait a minute. I was listening as it went line to line. That's one of my favorite yeah. things. Is it country? That yes, you country. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, 
those are good lines. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. the um, it's funny that you say the point of view because they had sort of a very different uh, concept, and I was like, well, my thing is motivation. Like I want yeah. it, so it became the whole song became this like older woman speaking to a younger woman about I love like. It go do all these things. So, but the, the rationale behind that, everyone is like, what, what are you doing? Why are you doing, are you trying to be, I'm like, I am a writer. And I think there's something beautiful about exploring every modality of that. Yeah. I, I want to just try, I love music. I love what it was literally, I would go to Nashville and sit in these rooms. Doing I can tell you as someone who writes songs, yes. that that is good. Thank you. It, and you it wasn't even about, it. I was just yeah. geeking out like, how am I here? Yeah. How am I here doing this? Because someone would be on a guitar and they'd be like, well, that's not the way you hold a guitar. Yeah. That's a really you good like that, Jack? That's my impersonation of a guitar every time. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm like, oh, I could, I can do this. Yeah. And that's where the one line comes from. Is like, oh, to be able to create something where there's one line that people go, holy Ooh. crap, that's good. Yeah. So, but everyone sort of wants to know, what do you do in this? What What, what do you do in here? And I'm like, I don't know. Mm. But there's beauty in just trying. And, and for and me, and is it? Let me ask you this. Yeah. Is it more everyone or more you? I think the when pressure, I hear it, the pressure, then it like, makes me say there's go. A pie of, there's a pie of pressure right, to not do it. Right. Would, how much of the pie is from the outside world and how much of it is from your right. imposter? Bus? It's like, yeah, it's probably me taking three people's comments yeah. and being like, oh, you're right. Exactly. What am I doing? Yeah. Uh, my boyfriend's in the music industry as well. And he was like, oh, well, maybe you should have a project and you're dead. And that's, and I was like, and then I sort of thought, oh God, okay, I should have a project. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. I think yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to see what happens here. So it's been really cool. It's really hard. Not hard. Yeah. But that when you are, when you've spent a lot of your life seeing your self-worth as someone who achieves. Yeah. To just do things uh, for fun is very strange. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, well, if I Maybe did, I could flip this well, into. I got to call that yeah, yeah. person. <laughs> I could. Who do I? Yeah. But I, I also feel like all of the major success I've had in my life was because I followed creative passion it wasn't because i was trying yeah. so i tried for a really long time but the thing that ended up blowing up for me was the thing that was just creatively was what i wanted to say and mm. everybody was like i don't i don't get this you're not supposed to talk about this stuff you're not and then that book ended up changing my life forever yeah. and it was just following creative passion so i know for myself if i just keep if I can just stay in that, yeah. that's where the world explodes in a beautiful way. I love, there's this guy, uh, Jack Conti, who's the one of the founders of um, Patreon. Yes, I was, I was like, why do his, I know that? He was wonderful. <gasps> Talking about creativity. Yeah, nothing works. Yes, yes. It's great. Where it's like... Um, Everybody go watch it. To just create he just, whatever. He gives like a 45 yes. minute thing of like nothing works. And yeah. if you know that, and, and that's not what's stopping you. Right. You just keep going. Right. And he shows all these... He goes like deep into like, did like stop animation. Yes. That takes like painstaking time. He's like, didn't care. Nobody cared. Yeah. Did this next thing. Nobody cared. Next yeah. thing, no and then like one thing worked. Right. You know? And you're never going to get to the one thing that works if you don't do all the other stuff. You're just not going to get there. Right. You know? Talk about though what that feels like once you've had success. Because it's a lot easier to do that when no one knows who you are. It's Is it? Yes. I, I tend to think it's similar that uh, the stress of no one... In the beginning, you have this huge stress that like, can I even do this? Am yeah. I wasting my time? Yeah. Is this ever going to be worth it? And then as soon as you get uh, a little bit of success, then you're like, I can never do it again. Uh, and then you get, hopefully, if you're lucky, some more success. And you're like, I'm never going to do it again. Like, at some point, you got to sit back and go, I just show up. Right, right. You know, I have this, this speech coming up, and I don't really do speeches, and so that's a little bit nerve-wracking. Yeah. And the only thing that I know to be true is like, I'll tell you what I'm not going to do is wait until the very end and just to try. I just know that if I show up and put an hour and a half of, yeah. of my heart in yeah. every single day leading up to this thing, yeah. it's going to be great. Yeah, of course it is. That's where I'm settling back into in my life right now is like, I know that if I show up and give my heart for a good amount of time every day, yeah. things things usually work out. Yeah. If you look at the curve of how it goes, Absolutely. like it works. Do you, know? you do, um, speaking of like spending time every day, do you do meditation? Do you do, you have a morning routine? Do you do anything? To yes. Practice? And I'm trying to get better at it, especially in the pandemic. Um, I've had seasons where I've been better at it than not, but now I'm like clinging to it yeah. more than ever. Yeah. It's essential. You know? So, um, so I'm a Baha'i. I don't know if you've heard of the Baha'i faith, oh, world religion based on yeah. the unity of religions. The, and all I can think of is the Baha'i temple. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's what's yeah, yeah. in my brain. And so I read 
Baha'i writings, um, try to meditate as much as possible, you know, do some 12 step work. And uh, yeah, that's yeah. like my little yeah. vibe. Yeah. And you're able to pull that into wherever you are in the world. Yes. Yes. A little, with mostly with, uh, you know, varying success. Right. Yes. Do you do visualization as part of that? Sort of like, this is where I'm going. This is who I want to be. Or I have done that before. Yeah. Yeah. I have seasons where I've done like um, vision boarding yeah. and all that stuff. It's very, yeah. very, very effective. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it funny that we're like, no, I, there was a time I was doing it was working really, really well. Of course. But I, I'm just not, I'm not, not right so now. Much. But Don't like, believe it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no, it worked super good. I mean, me and my manager, we sat and wrote out a list of everything we wanted when I was a street performer. And it all came true. Yeah. Which is pretty wild. It's it's real. It's really it's wild. It's 100% yeah. real, though. I believe deeply yeah. that we create what we what we see, what we want, who we are. We create this, right? Yeah, he was really helpful on me really believing. Yeah. I, I had the whispers in my soul, and I knew that I was good or going to be good. Yeah. That's the hardest. You know, you're like, I know that I have something to bring here. And then when I go ahead and sing it, it's like not there yet. <laughs> so that dissonance is a little bit difficult. Yeah. And he was someone who just believed so hard right away that I found myself believing more. Yeah. And it was really, yeah. I credit him with that. You started out this conversation talking about sort of grappling with your worth, like yeah. the wor that you're worthy of standing on that stage. What does that process feel like for you? I think th there's... A, you know, I'm just trying to think of how to say it, that if you are someone like me who for the last 10 years has been overly praised and been seen as special in many, many situations that you're in, yeah, that can't be healthy for you. It's amazing, though, that you have that awareness. <laughs> that can't, like, that's, yeah. that, that, that's not good right. for anyone. Right. But every hotel you get to, there's like they give you the best room and there's right. a chocolate with your name on it. Like That's not how this goes. <laughs> and so... If that happens in all the situations that you're in, um, that's a little bit, that's like a problem. Mm -hmm. And so then I'm doing some work to get rid of that as the best that I can. Yeah. Um, but then also, like you said, you need some sort of an ego to get in front of a bunch of people and own the space yeah. and give them what they need. Yeah. And that's just kind of, if you're a performer, you, you realize you're wading into that place. Yeah. And that you need to get better at, I don't know, whatever the balance of yeah. that is. Yeah. I tend to think of it as like, I... I do prep before I walk on stage, but she only exists there. Yeah. And I, I think it throws people off because I'm sort of talking about myself in third person like a proper douchebag. Yeah. But um, uh, she only lives on that stage. And then when I walk off stage, she's not there anymore. Yeah. Because it is like such a bigger persona than my actual who I am. Yeah. Um, and I think that it really, COVID really helped me because we had to go back because I went from like, a full office with 60 employees and people setting up the podcast and doing whatever. Yep. And all of a sudden inside of COVID, I'm doing everything from home. Like the amount of times I had to call Jack and be like, how do I make the recorder? Like it's not turning on, what do yeah. I do? It felt old school. It felt like going back to being a street performer. Yes. And I remembered, yes, it's a lot more of a pain, but there's also, I love the sort of realness in that. Yes. And I don't want to leave that again. Yeah. It's why this morning I'm like, hey, guys, I'm coffee bitch. Like, who wants everyone yeah. put your coffee order in? I'm yeah. the one that's going because I don't ever want to lose. I don't want to get back to that place where I'm sort of separated from the groundwork. Yeah, really, like, that's so uh, I'm reading this book, which is awesome. Have you read From Strength to Strength? No. Oh, my God. You're okay, great. That. I'm it's getting really it on that. I already bought it. And it's mind. very much on the idea that... Uh, it's a little bit, I, I would say, I think it's a little bit early for me, but maybe not. So it's about the second half of life, mm. right? And that what makes people happiest over their lifetime. And they find the people who really shoot up high to the special thing have a lot farther to fall because everybody will decline no matter who you are. You will decline. That's part of life. And so they find that people that are super successful and high achievers have a much harder time in the second half when they start to come back down. Yeah. And the people that never reached the super high were a little bit more comfortable just being one of the pack are like a little bit happier. Yeah. And so that is really fantastic to me. Kind of what we're speaking to yeah. is like, okay, how do I do this job, which is like, has this whole aura of rock star around it. Right. Um, and, and still find, create enough space in my life to where, and not in a way that I'm like proud of that. 
it's, it's a really hard thing to even talk about because you're like, well, wow, this is such a big deal. It's so hard to be normal. <laughs> like, sincerely, oh, man, I'm not being served in this way. This yeah. is, like, not good for my it's heart. It's empty. There's yeah, how do we find enough spaces where I am just... One of the else. weirdest experiences that I've ever encountered in my life is going from sort of the highest high, like you're performing on stage, maybe you do a VIP afterwards, people are hugging you, they're giving you gifts, they're loving to thank you for your work, and then you go back to a hotel room and you're totally by yourself. Yeah. It's one of the weirdest, I, I, I'm a, this is a very douchey statement, I know it, but um, I was flying back from a keynote speech one time on a private jet Yeah. alone. And I was like, this is either the sickest, like coolest thing I've ever done or the most depressing yeah. that you've achieved the highest heights. Like what you're on a pri It's like me and the pilots that is, is so empty. Yeah. And so, um, this idea of like, how do I, how do we hold space and just sort of put something aside to kind of come back to who you really are? Because it's not who you really are. Yeah. It's a part of you certainly, but it can't be the whole, I don't know. Do you fly on private jets all the time by yourself? And you're like, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, mean, I own no, no, my no, no, own no, no. private jet. No, you know, the, the, the memory that's coming to me is that um, I've done a couple shows with Taylor Swift and she's brought me on stage to sing with her. And, you know, you're out on stage in front of 60,000 people. And then you are, then you're just like done. Yeah. You're back. And I remember just like walking alone in Chicago where we had played through the streets, just going like, what a strange yeah. situation. Yeah. How did I just go from this to that? Yeah, because you're you're here to be of service. Everybody's singing the song. It's awesome. Um, but what that that was a fun visit. Yeah, I'm yeah. not trying you got to, to touch that for a minute. Yeah, that's yeah. that's fun. It's and then I think with COVID, what we're going back to is talking about how like oh that was more of me than I wanted there that to be. Ooh, that's so then good. you stop it, and I'm like an addict who's like, no, I need a hit. I need a hit. What are you talking about? Right. I can't go get any of that special shit. Do you have the special <laughs> shit? I'm special, right? And no one, and, and then like, and I'm not getting that from outside validation. So I have to just like really do this weird internal work of how do I get that with myself? Right. And especially for men, that feels awkward and weak. Hmm. Feels like really, wait, what, why, do, why do I need it, first of all? How do I even do it? And what is this process? It's, it felt like going to class, having not done my homework or something like, oh, I'm really bad at this. Yeah. So then you, you're going from this fake thing you're telling yourself that I'm very special to like, I'm actually not that good at this and I'm a novice. Yeah. So here I am, right. first day of school, yeah. therapy. <laughs> Let's tell me why, what I need to work on or what I need to do. I'm, I'm in. Let's right. figure it out, you know? Um, you were talking about this idea of achievement and I was thinking, I have to tell you about a book you need to read if you haven't. Yeah. Gap versus Gain. Great. The Gap versus the Gain is the most amazing book for a high achiever, mm. which w I feel like based yep. on what you're saying would yep. be really helpful. So the whole concept is that as achievers, we constantly are judging ourselves against where we think we are supposed to be or who we think we are supposed mm. to be. So we're like, well, I'm here, but I'm going there. And so all you ever see is the gap, right? You always look at your life or judge your life based on the gap between where you are and where you want to be. And I'm going to guess, since you're an achiever, that you've achieved huge things and then immediately you're like, okay, that high is over, next thing. Pretty quickly, yeah. Right, you don't sort of sit and celebrate whatever because you've got this gap, I gotta make up the difference. So the whole concept is that you stop judging forward, you look backwards. So you judge where you are versus where you were. Ooh. So you say you're judging how much you've gained, not how what the gap is, but how much you've gained. In six months, like, okay, yeah, today was a bad day, but you know what? Six months ago, this day would have been a lot worse and I would have handled it in a worse way. Ooh. Or two years ago or 10 years ago, like, look how far you come as a man or father or a friend so that you're not constantly coming up short. Yeah. It was really powerful for oh, me. I, I was that. like, oh gosh, great. okay, great. Okay, we're doing, we're doing pretty good, Rach. We got this thing. <laughs> um, I could literally talk to you forever and yes. I really and I really want to be conscious because you do have a show today yes and I want to be conscious of oh, vocal thank you cords. So much. um this has been a pleasure what a lovely time yeah. to spend some and I felt like I like just I don't know why but I was like we're gonna get along yeah really of course well. yeah so yeah, this we is have super rad hopefully a lot of the same light and a yeah. lot of the same dark seems like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right so similar, we'll talk about that on the dark. next podcast yeah, yeah, exactly. we'll throw that out but this has cool. been so fun I'm so pumped to see the show tonight yes yeah, I'll be, be out there with the boys crying super somewhere fun. yeah yeah
Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, wait, I just wanted to say for people who are watching, they want to grab the new album. Yes. Like where, where can they go? Where should they go? Where should well, they go? Well, this is, you? I don't know when the podcast comes out. We might still be on tour. So yeah, come hang within out. Within the next couple weeks. In the yeah. next couple weeks. Yeah. Go to andygrammer.com, get right. some tickets, come right. hang out. It's a really, really fun show. Yeah. We've got a huge band. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, I'm fun. excited. And, um, and then, you know, anywhere you go to get music, we just basically have songs coming out every month. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Cool. Love you. Come follow yeah. me on all the things. Whatever. All the things. Yeah. Hanging out. Thanks. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah.